Tech giants have been announcing uh, layoffs. We've heard uh, from companies like Twitter, Meta, Intel, and Amazon. Join us now to discuss the best way to navigate these layoffs and stay valuable as a worker. Alan Guarino, Corn Ferry Vice Chairman, and Sadal Neely, Harvard Business School professor and author of The Digital Mindset, What It uh, Really Takes to Thrive in the Age of Data, Algorithms, and AI. Uh, I'll just start, so I'll get to you in, in a second. I just want to start with Alan because it, it just seems like there's a skill mismatch in this country. I mean, you can do very well in certain areas right now. You can demand 20% pay increases in, in a lot of different areas, and yet in tech you're seeing some layoffs. So and it's just hard to talk about this. It's, it's like it's a monolith at this point. I'd like, I mean, a rail worker or anybody in the, in the airline industry, um, they've got so much power right now. And I think unions are, are a little bit resurgent in some of these areas. So what's, where's the disconnect there between that and tech, Alan? Well, Joe, the disconnect, and, and you're absolutely right, the construction industry as well, tremendous uh, you know, opportunity for, for, for employees to, to call the shots. The, the, the disconnect is, is not maybe as big as you think. What, what has happened is that while the downsizing has occurred in the digital platforms, and of course in what you were talking about earlier, Bob Greifeld, the, the crypto and digital asset space, th that has been pulling a lot of tech talent off the market from traditional corporations. So what we're going to see is that those folks that are laid off from some of these sort of higher flying digital platforms are going to be able to finally get hired by these companies that have been sitting on thousands of openings. So what we're going to see is not necessarily a, uh, a disconnect, but we're going to see, you know, Adam Smith come in and the invisible hand will, will redeploy this tech talent. So it's not as bad as it might sound, but they're not going to be working for the place that they worked for the day before. Um. Sadal, this, this terrible dystopian future that, that, in my view, that you're always describing to us about no one going back to work. And I blame you, in large part, for a lot of this. this uh, we now think it's normal for people to stay home. No, I'm just kidding. But you, you have been correct that the hybrid uh, model, I think, is, is, here, is here to stay. Um, but that's part of the problem, I think. People still aren't back. We're at 65 percent, I think, uh, in, in office workers. It used to be in New York, I would think it was 80 percent before. So we're not back. You, you still think that's OK, though? Hi, Joe. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the that. reality is that uh, we're in the new world of work. And this is no different than what we st saw historically after the Black Plague, after the Spanish flu, World War I, World War II. Historically, we see a whole revolution in work and working. So this idea, this conversation, we're going into our third year, is no, is no more, uh, it's no longer as relevant as it was long ago. Will it work? Will it not work? Et cetera. That's been proven. What's happening today, and even with these layoffs, is that ultimately there are all these corrections that are taking place. Underperformers will struggle. Stars and high performers are more protected. Those with relevant skills and expertise will be more protected. So this idea that this is about physical location and where people are going and spending or zooming in or micro Microsoft Teams conversations, that's no longer relevant. We're past that, Joe. Can I trade you a, everybody comes back, but we only go, come back for four days? I'll do that. If you want for a four-day work week, can, can I trade you for that? We all came, come back, but it's a four-day week. I'll get to talk to the New York, they'll never do it. The New York Stock Exchange is greedy. They, they will never, ever do that, I don't think, uh, said all. So, so how does this, I'm just trying to figure out this new thing that you described at all, how does it play into what we're seeing out in, in Silicon Valley? It's going to get bloody, it's going to get bloody in yes. advertising land, it's going to get bloody in TV land uh, if, if the economy does slow. There's going to be layoffs across the board. 
Yes, but unfortunately, in to today's climate for many people, many workers, the real answer is, can they control their fate? Can they be more valuable? Can they be more visible? All of those things, the real answer is no. There's nothing that people can do because we've heard apology after apology about redirecting strategies, focusing on the essentials, killing initiatives that should have never been. Bloated companies are shrinking and retrenching. So these layoffs are not about individual performance and presence, et cetera. It's about leadership and strategy. And this is really important. We're misplacing the culpabilities if we're thinking along these lines. So work has evolved dramatically, and it's going to continue to be more digital, more distributed, and using many more tools and technologies. And we better understand that and upskill. This is the reality. This is the reality.